From the moment police officer Patrick saw the sad dog holding onto this white bag for dear life, he had to know what was in there. But capturing the animal would turn out to be more of a challenge than he had anticipated. During this whole process, he was imagining what was in the bag, but he could have never predicted what it would turn out to be. This simple assignment had just gotten a lot more complicated. When Officer Patrick and the rescue worker who assisted him finally managed to drive the strange acting dog into a corner and captured it, they were finally able to take the white bag that had been carrying all this time out of its mouth. Patrick had been amazed by how much this dog was trying to take this bag with him, even if it slowed his escape down severely and made it so he could not bite to defend himself. His curiosity as to what was in there was now through the roof. When the dog was safely in the case, Patrick was finally able to open the bag and the moment he laid his eyes on it, he could not help but scream. He could not believe what he had just found. So what was in the white bag? Why did the dog care about it so much and how could it scare a police officer like that? Welcome to Wonderbot Animals. Officer Patrick Stevenson was used to callers exaggerating when something was wrong, but he'd already received multiple reports that there was a dog in the local park acting strangely. He wasn't too worried in the beginning and told everyone that animal control could handle it. He had no idea that the case would prove to be even too much for the professionals. After the fourth person called, Patrick figured animal control wasn't listening and called them himself. He found out that they barely had any employees. All their vehicles were out on other calls, and there was only one person who might have been able to help. But there was a hiccup with the rules. Because picking up a stray dog could be dangerous, employees were required to go in pairs. There was only one person at animal control, so Patrick volunteered to help out. He had almost nothing else to do for the day anyway. That decision was the start of one of the wildest days of his career. Before they left, Patrick looked over his notes from all the phone calls. A few people had mentioned that the dog would growl or bare his teeth when they tried to get close, but no one thought the dog would fight a rescuer. It wasn't all that big. Patrick left it up to Austin, the rescue worker, but maybe that was a mistake. It was Austin's first time going out without an experienced animal control technician. He appreciated Patrick volunteering to help him, but Patrick wasn't trained to handle animals who were scared or aggressive. Patrick wasn't all that worried. Maybe he should have been. When they arrived at the park, it didn't take them long to figure out the right location. There was already a group of people huddled around the area. Patrick and Austin got ready. Neither of them knew what to expect. The truth would shock them and change the way they viewed animals forever. All the bystanders were staying far away from the dog. The animal was lying down and panting in a patch of grass. It was sunny out, and Patrick didn't immediately understand why everyone had said the dog was behaving in a weird way. He put on his sunglasses and looked closer. That's when he heard it. The dog started whimpering and crying. The noise got louder and louder until the animal was howling. At first, Patrick thought it was biting the air, but when they got a little closer, he noticed that that dog would make a noise and then bite onto a bag by its mouth. What was in the bag? It turned out that the caller's description was correct. As soon as Patrick and Austin approached, the dog bared his teeth and started looking threatening. It eventually stood up and watched them. Patrick was suddenly nervous. The animal looked determined, not scared. It had to be something to do with that bag. Austin's hands were shaking as he got his equipment together. He had a dog catching pole with a loop on one end to catch the dog but when he held it out to try to secure the animal, the dog kept dodging it. After a few attempts, the dog sprinted away, then turned around to stare back at them. Austin was confused and explained the situation to Patrick. Most dogs lunged at the pole and tried to bite it. This dog, however, was obviously too focused on holding onto the bag. It almost seemed like the dog had been trained to carry the bag around and protect it. Patrick and Austin had never heard of such a thing before. Patrick thought about all the reasons that a dog would want to hold on to an object. Did it have food in it? Was it a favourite toy? The dog was crying, so it was likely in distress or injured. 
He just couldn't understand why the animal would put the bag before its own safety. Patrick and Austin discussed what they'd noticed about the dog so far. It didn't look like a stray. The dog was obviously fed well and had a clean coat that made it seem like more of a house pet. But despite all the people standing around watching, none of them appeared to be the owner. Austin checked out the park and pointed out that there weren't many places that they could corner the dog to catch it. He knew from experience that if the dog ran away, they'd never be able to match its speed. After a couple more minutes of brainstorming, they finally had a plan. Austin suggested using the bystanders to corral the dog closer. With so many people around, the dog couldn't possibly avoid all of them. Patrick called the group over and told them the plan. Luckily, almost everyone agreed to help right away. Austin started describing where each person would go. It almost sounded like it could work. Luckily, the park area had some fencing and was fairly small. Austin thought that they could herd the dog into one of the corners of the park by making sure it couldn't escape anywhere else. If that was the easiest way to go, the dog would probably follow along. But Austin couldn't be sure. This dog seemed so different from the others he'd caught before. When the group starting putting the plan into action, it was obvious that the dog was confused. It growled at several people, but began backing away like Austin had planned. Still, Patrick was nervous about what would happen when the dog didn't have anywhere else safe to go. Would it attack them? At last, they managed to back the dog into a corner of the park where there was fencing blocking its path. Austin moved closer with the pole. The dog tried to avoid it, but there wasn't anywhere else it could go. Finally, when the dog was frozen and unable to make a decision about where to run, Austin lunged. Austin and Patrick were shocked by how quickly the dog calmed down. Instead of fighting against the loop around its neck, the dog almost seemed to give up. Patrick could tell that the animal was exhausted and probably needed some water to cool off. But the dog still wouldn't let go of the bag in its mouth. Austin went back to his vehicle to get a cage to transport the dog. He was confident that if no one came forward, someone would be interested in adopting the animal. It was young and in good shape. But before they could put the dog in the cage, they had to get the bag away from it. Austin arrived again at the place in the park where the dog had been lying in the grass, holding its precious bag. The dog was still there. It even seemed as if it hadn't moved an inch. The animal was completely exhausted and Patrick had his head carefully pinned to the ground, waiting for them to make the next move. Austin had mixed feelings about the situation. Of course, this is not how you ever want to see an animal in this condition, but he also knew at the same time that they just did not have much of a choice here. They had to go, he decided. But then he noticed that the dog was so tired that it had its tongue hanging from its mouth. It wasn't that this is an unusual thing for a dog to do when it has to cool down. What was surprising is the fact that the mouth had finally opened. Austin's mind immediately went to the thought that the animal was not holding the bag anymore. And after taking a closer look, it was visible that the bag was free to grab in front of the dog's mouth. Patrick and Austin had a moment of eye contact after which Austin instructed Patrick that he really had to make sure that the dog would not be able to move forward. Now, he slowly started to move forward with his eyes focused on the bag. Unfortunately, the dog realized what was going on, and so it immediately reacted. In a blink of an eye, the dog started to move again, attempting to reach the bag that had been in his mouth before. This time, however, it realized that it couldn't get there anymore. Out of a feeling of force majeure, the animal started to really push against Patrick and his stick. But barking and biting were not enough for the dog to win this fight. Austin, in the meantime, had made his way towards his companion and the animal, and a couple of seconds later, he managed to snatch the bag away. Now, he had to make sure to get away by taking a few steps back from the two. They gave the dog some room and time to get all its energy out of the system. Patrick had to stay on the ground in his position for a while. He curiously looked over his shoulder where Austin was opening up the slightly heavy bag. Were they finally going to reveal the bag's surprising contents? At the same time, 
Austin was wondering whether he was qualified enough to deal with this. What Austin found in the bag was a large collection of dog collars. Patrick screamed with excitement. The collars seemed to come in all shapes and sizes, making it obvious that the collars were belonging to different dogs. They were clearly used, as some of them still had dog hairs attached to them. What was the meaning of all this? The scene obviously raised many questions for the two. Where did these collars come from, and how did they end up in a bag in this dog's mouth? Why was this animal so attached to them, defending it with his life? The more Austin thought about it all, the more he started to get a really bad feeling about the situation. The two talked about them working together well as a team, and both Austin and Patrick wanted to get to the bottom of this case. But first, they had to bring the dog to a nearby shelter, they thought. At this point, the poor animal seemed to have no more energy left. It wouldn't be too difficult moving the dog towards the truck. And while they were trying to move the dog in the right direction, Austin noticed for the first time that this animal had a collar around the neck as well. He swiftly took it off when the dog was still contained by Patrick's stick. Austin had no idea yet that this discovery would end up to be the key to understanding what was going on. They continued to carry the dog to the truck and headed out towards the animal shelter. Upon their arrival, the animal was quickly handed over to the care of other employers. It was clear from Austin's expression that he had some unfinished business, and so his colleagues let them be. The focus was on the bag now, filled with all those different collars. Patrick asked if there was an empty room available, so Austin took him to one. On a large table, they displayed out all of the collars and they started inspecting them one by one. It did not take Austin long to discover that even though these collars were very different, they also had a few things in common. Where these pet tags usually have a name or an address on them, the information of these collars was very minimal. All of them only contained a number. Austin eventually found all the numbers from 1 to 26. And wouldn't you believe it, the number on the collar of the dog carrying the bag was 27. All right, this was quite a discovery already, Austin thought. And yet, this is as far as they got, which mostly caused even more confusion. Did this mean that there were 26 dogs before this one? What had happened to them? Why then had this dog been carrying all the collars? Luckily, there was something else the collars had in common. Seemingly, a code was carved into the back of all of them. Austin first thought nothing of it, but when he discovered that a pattern could be found in all of the tags, he knew he was onto something. Could he recognize what it was? At first not, but a quick search on the web immediately provided the explanation he was looking for. It wasn't a password of some sort. The codes actually contained coordinations. The location could be found on the computer and it pinpointed to a nearby spot just outside of the city. Austin and Patrick were full of excitement. The code would seemingly bring them to an old house that was somewhat secluded from any other properties in the area. What the hell was going on here? It was getting late already, but Austin was determined not to wait out the night to get the answers he was now so desperately looking for. So he packed in their collars again, including that of the rescue dog. With a heavy heart, Patrick announced that he could not join the rest of their quest, meaning that Austin was all alone again. Austin, on his own, drove for 20 minutes before he finally reached the house. On the way, he briefly informed his team about the discoveries and his current plan. The house was actually in better shape than the pictures online suggested, but still, he was very sceptical about what could be going on inside the place. Austin silently parked his car in front of the house, took the bag of collars in his hand and headed for the front door of the house. When he rang the wooden doorbell, he was immediately greeted by the loud barking of multiple dogs. One of them came up, jumping against the window next to the door. Austin saw its collar, 31. Not long after an old man opened the door. They stood there for a moment, looking at each other. Both of the men were surprised because they actually recognized each other. Austin knew this man from the shelter as he was a fairly frequent visitor. The old man had no doubt on his mind either. They'd talked to each other before. Austin processed this for a second. Eventually, he started to get it. This man had always come to the shelter for the older animals. 
he'd made it a habit of picking up the oldest, sickest, and most fragile dogs from the shelter. The old man additionally told him that he not only picked these kinds of animals up from Austin's place, but also from other shelters in the city. Why would he do this? Apparently, the old man was a genius when it comes to reviving retired dogs, and he claimed to be able to give them the best years possible. The dog containing Collar 27 had ran away recently after his explanation was that the dog must have smelled the bag, reminding it of his old friend that sadly passed. When it left, the dog probably took the bag for this reason. The man was overjoyed to see his bag again, as these collars contained all very cherished memories. It gave Austin a warm feeling to see the old man so cheerful. Austin left soon after when he realised it was getting seriously late. The old man came back to the shelter the next morning to pick up his dog. The dog with number 27, very delighted to see his caretaker again, was brought home as well as two new other rusty old dogs. Austin smiled because he was certain that they were going to be in great hands in their final years.